Hello. I hope you want to read with me today because I have some very colorful selections for us today. Um, one of these is something we've read from before and the other one is one we have not. I'll start with the familiar one. We've had some selections from here before. This is Eric Carle's Dragons, Dragons. Now as a reminder, this is a book of illustrations by Eric Carle. Um, these illustrations are inspired by mythical creatures, or beasts that never existed. They may be based on real creatures, but they, are, they, they exist only in the imaginations of the people that created them. So we're going to start with White Buffalo Woman. A beautiful maiden dressed in sage unwrapped the pipe and taught the songs and prayers of five great ceremonies. She disappeared, and the people saw only a white buffalo cow trotting over the prairie. By John Beerhorst. Now, white buffalo woman, as you can imagine, uh, comes from the Native American tribe of the, Lana of the Lakota Sioux in the Midwestern, uh, what is now the sort of the Midwestern United States. Um, she would come, the, according to the story, she would come to the Sioux people as a young woman, and she would lead them through times of trouble. The buffalo, or the bison, were very important to the, to the Sioux. So, as you can imagine, that may be where this creature comes from. We'll do another creature from the stories of Na Native American tribe. This one is Rainbow Crow. I will go. I will stop the snow. Aya, 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 aya. Rain, rainbow crow. Stop the snow, crow. Fly to the sky high. Rain, rainbow crow. Aya, 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 aya. Nancy Van Lan. The rainbow crow um, comes from the Lenape tribe. Uh, according to according to their stories, it saved the all the animals from winter by flying to the sky, and bringing back the gift of fire. And ever since then, from carrying the fire in its mouth, it has lost its beautiful singing voice and now only has a very hoarse voice. And if you've ever heard heard a real raven, you'll know what I'm talking about. And its once beautiful rainbow-colored feathers are now blackened with ash, and have remained that way ever since then. Ah, some ferocious beasts. The Griffin. Protector of pharaohs, defender of kings, the Griffin watched over their crowns and their rings. With wings of an eagle and sharp lion claws, it once tore to pieces the breaker of laws. It heard every whisper and knew every plot. And you may believe it, or else you may not. By Arnold Sundgaard. The griffin, as you can see, was supposed to have the body of a lion, uh, the wings of an eagle, and it had very long ears that were supposed to be able to hear just about anything. It was fiercely protective of anything valuable. It talks about the crowns and the rings of kings. Uh, it was said to lay jewels instead of eggs. And a related creature, the hippogriff. When mare and griffin meet and mate, their offspring share a curious fate. One half is horse, with hooves and tail. The rest is eagle, claws and nail. As a horse it likes to graze, in summer meadows doused in haze. Yet as an eagle it can fly above the clouds where dreams drift by. With such a beast I am enthralled. The hippogriff this beast is called. The hippogriff was thought to be the child of a griffin, and a horse. Ah, familiar one, the unicorn. Oh, this is the animal that never was. They hadn't seen one, but just the same. They loved its graceful movement, the way it stood, looking at them calmly with clear eyes. The unicorn, of course, being a horse-like figure with a single horn coming out of its head. It was first described back in 
the time of the Roman Empire as a creature with elephant hoofs and was very ferocious, but over time it has turned into just more of simply a horse with, with a horn coming out, and it's not quite as ferocious as it used to be. Mm. And from Greek mythology, we have Pan. Sweet, 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 O oh Pan, piercing sweet by the river, blinding sweet, O oh great god Pan, the sun on the hill forgot to die, and the lilies revived, and the dragonfly came back to dream on the river. In Greek mythology, Pan was a, I guess, a minor god, you would say, uh, with the top half of a human, but the horns and the bottom half of a goat, uh, associated with nature, um, and the instrument, the Pan Pipes, a real instrument, uh, takes its name from Pan. We will do one more. This is from Japanese culture. This one is called the Kappa by Hiro Sato. Saucer on his head, carapace on his back, the river urchin pulls pranks, tickling your tush in the slimy lake, stealing your belly button while you're snoozing. But water is the source of his life. When, out on land too long, his saucer begins to dry, he dashes home to keep his carapace cucumber fresh. The kappa, a very strange creature, um, was thought to have a dish in its head where it would hold water. And according to legend, that's where its, its strength and its power came from. If you could trick it into bowing, all the water would spill out of its head and it would be weak. Um, a mischief maker, as you can probably tell, if it's going to steal your belly button while you're snoozing. Many more in there. We will probably come back to that on a later day. Next, I want to read a story about not a mythical creature. This is definitely an animal that exists, but this, but this creature is a little bit different from the ones you know. This is about an elephant. It is called... Elmer. There was once a herd of elephants. Elephants young, elephants old, elephants tall or fat or thin, elephants like this, that, or the other, all different but all happy and all the same color. All that is except Elmer. Elmer was different. Elmer was patchwork. Elmer was yellow and orange and red and pink and purple and blue and green and black and white. Elmer was not elephant color. It was Elmer who kept the elephants happy. Sometimes he joked with the other, ele other elephants, sometimes they joked with him. But if there was even a little smile, it was usually Elmer who started it. One night, Elmer couldn't sleep for thinking, and the think that he was thinking was that he was tired of being different. Who ever heard of a patchwork elephant, he thought. No wonder they laugh at me. In the morning, before the others were really awake, Elmer slipped quietly away, unnoticed. As he walked through the jungle, Elmer met other animals. They always said, Good morning, Elmer. Each time, Elmer smiled and said, Good morning. After a long walk, Elmer found what he was looking for, a large bush. A large bush covered with berries. A large bush covered with elephant-colored berries. Elmer caught hold of the bush and shook it and shook it so that the berries fell on the ground. Oh, 
Once the ground was covered in berries, Elmer lay down and rolled over and over this way and that way and back again. Then he picked up bunches of berries and rubbed himself all over, covering himself with berry juice until there wasn't a sign of any yellow, or orange, or red, or pink, or purple, or blue, or green, or black, or white. When he had finished, Elmer looked like any other elephant. After that, Elmer set off back to the herd. On the way, he passed the other animals again. This time, each one said to him, Good morning, elephant. And each time, Elmer smiled and said, Good morning, pleased that he wasn't recognized. When Elmer rejoined the other elephants, they were all standing quietly. None of them noticed Elmer as he worked his way to the middle of the herd. Where is Elmer here? After a while, Elmer felt that something was wrong. But what? He looked around. Same old jungle, same old bright sky, same old rain cloud that came over from time to time, and lastly, some old elephants. Elmer looked at them. The elephants were standing absolutely still. Elmer had never seen them so serious before. The more he looked at the serious, silent, still standing elephants, the more he wanted to laugh. Finally, he could bear it no longer. He lifted his trunk at the top of his voice, shouted, Boo! The elephants jumped and fell all ways in surprise. Oh my gosh and golly, they said, and then saw Elmer helpless with laughter. Elmer, they said, it must be Elmer. Then the other elephants laughed, as they had never laughed before. As they laughed, the rain cloud burst, and when the rain fell on Elmer, his patchwork started to show again. The elephants still laughed as Elmer was washed back to normal. Oh, Elmer, gasped an old elephant. You've played some good jokes, but this has been the biggest laugh of all. It didn't take you long to show your true colors. We must celebrate this day every year, said another. This will be Elmer's day. All elephants must decorate themselves, and Elmer will decorate himself as elephant color. That is exactly what the elephants do. On one day a year, they decorate themselves and parade. On that day, if you happen to see an elephant, ordinary elephant color, you will know it must be Elmer. You can probably figure out which one's Elmer in that picture, huh? The end. You know, that last picture kind of reminds me of the, the end of the big orange spot, if you remember us reading that one. All right, and that is all I have for you today. Hope to see you next time.